Years ago, I made a video about cutting up a maple stump into a cube shape. I actually made two cubes. I stored one inside and stored one outside just to see how each one would dry out. The outside cube rotted away in a couple of years. It happened so fast, I didn't think to get any pictures of it. The cube that was stored inside dried out pretty evenly over the course of three to four years, and now it's time for me to make something out of it. First thing I want to do with this cube is flatten all the sides and make all the edges perpendicular to each other. I have a router sled that I made for flattening slabs, but I will need to raise it up to reach the height of the cube. I ended up making these simple squares that I can clamp to my workbench. They will allow me to adjust the height of the router sled so I can get the sides perfectly flat and level. In order to get all the edges perpendicular, I employed some tips and tricks I had learned over the years by watching YouTube machinists like Ox Tools and A-Bomb 79. The basic principle is that if your work surface is level and you level one face of the cube, let's call it face one, you can easily make the opposite face, face two, parallel by simply flipping over the cube and using the freshly leveled face as a reference against the work surface. Then using face one as a reference, you can use shims to get that face perfectly 90 degrees to the work surface. So that will make face three square to the faces one and two. Flip face number three over and flatten face number four, which will make it parallel to face three and perpendicular to faces one and two. Flip the cube on its side and shim it so all four faces now are perpendicular to the work surface. If faces 1 through 4 are exactly 90 degrees to the work surface, then when you flatten face 5, it will also be square to faces 1 through 4. Finally, flip face 5 down on the work surface and flatten the final face. I know it sounds complicated, but if you do it once, it will all make sense and you will never forget how to do it again. As the cube dried, it developed some serious cracks. I plan to fill those cracks with epoxy. First, I need to clean out dust and loose wood fibers so the epoxy will adhere to the wood. At the moment, I'm only sealing up the end grain. I will get to the big epoxy pores later on in the video. At this point, I am still unsure what this cube will be used for, but I know I want it to have handles because this thing is heavy. I first remove the bulk of the waste with a Forstner bit, then using a template, I finish cutting the handle pocket with a pattern bit on my router. Time for the first pour. This is actually the first time I have poured epoxy, and as you will see, I had some struggles. I use turquoise mica powder to give the infill a nice color that contrasts well with the wood. My first mistake was using blue tape to mask off the ends of the crack, thinking that would do anything to stop the epoxy. As you can see, the level of epoxy in the crack kept dropping as I was frantically trying to keep the tape stuck in place and clean up spilled epoxy at the same time. Finally, I grabbed my glue gun and a scrap of plywood and plugged up the end of the cube with a generous helping of hot glue. Sorry about the camera angle, but I was sort of panicking at the time. Well, this ended up turning into a hot mess. And I'm sure a lot of you that were watching this are like, there's no way that painter's tape would hold up to resin. Well, I know that now. The painter's tape held up pretty good until it got saturated with resin and then it didn't hold anymore. And that's when uh, it started springing leaks everywhere. And uh, <clears throat> I kind of was sitting there with my hand holding back the flood. 
trying to think of what to do and that's when I saw my hot glue gun over there and so I grabbed it and held back the flood while it heated up and grabbed a scrap piece of plywood here and just glued the crap out of it and slapped it up there and it held back most of it but as you can see some of it still wanted to leak through and so I I glued some rags in to stop the 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 bleeding and then when all that was said and done it started to leak on this end so I had to do it all over again I was a little bit more prepared for this end um, sealing up this guy but now I gotta deal with the aftermath I gotta pull these pieces of wood off and figure out how to get the hot glue off of the stump and um, and at one point I did have enough resin to fill all these voids but I have I had to order more resin to make up for what I lost um, I didn't make too big of a mess after everything was said and done I don't know I think the stump is glued to the table so we'll have to see how that turns out but I was able to recover most of the, the spilled resin but a lot of it got soaked up in rags and that's the parts that you're seeing missing here and it definitely took a lot more than I was expecting so these cracks went a lot deeper than than I realized so anyway it'll be a couple days before I get back to this because I'm waiting for more resin to show up I do have other resin but it's like tabletop resin I don't think I can do deep pours with it so that's fine I need a break from this anyway so when you see me again I'll be back on it So back to the router sled I go. The router did a great job of removing the residual plywood and glue so I could get back to finishing this cube. Somehow I didn't learn my lesson from last time and once again used blue tape to finish pouring the epoxy, but this time it went okay. Well I got ahead of myself. Um, I used this uh, handheld router and I routed a three quarter inch round over on all the edges of the cube. And then I did a quarter inch round over on the inside of the handle. And then, um, that was after I did a rough sanding. This is my third attempt to seal the top of this. This is gonna be, if this is gonna be a plant stand, this is gonna be the top portion that's exposed to the most water. So this is my third coat of this uh, teal mica powder infused resin. Just trying to get the remaining little cracks. Um, and as you can see, I've got little dams set up because there were some cracks that still had wrapped around the corner after I did the, uh, the routing. I should, those should all be able to sand down when, once it's cured. Um, so I think it's going to work out. Um, time will tell. Just There's a lot of sanding involved, and obviously you don't want to watch that. So I've been doing that off camera. And so I sanded the whole cube to about 100 grit before I routed it. Just tried to make sure everything was flat so my route lines would be very straight. Um, so, so far it's turning out great. You know, I have no expectations with this project because it's just a thing that I'm making. And, um, but it's turning out to be, in my opinion, pretty nice. So I can't wait to get it done. Once this cures, I'm going to sand it flat again and then give the whole cube one last good sanding. And then I'm going to use some um, satin polyurethane, give it a nice satin finish, and then I'll probably 3D print some legs or some little feet or something to go on this to just to raise it up off the ground. I'm not going to finish the underside because I do want it to be able to breathe a little bit, um, be able to release moisture it already has in it or take in moisture as needed, um, and hopefully that'll help it avoid uh, for further cracking and things like that. 
I feel like if I seal it all the way around completely, um, and if the moisture has nowhere to go, it's going to crack to uh, release any additional moisture. So if uh, you think I'm wrong, go ahead and let me know in the comments below. I'm happy to entertain any ideas when it comes to wood movement and moisture and humidity changes and all that fun stuff. Here is the finished product. What do you guys think? I figure it can be used as a small table, plant stand, or stool. I love the look of the spalted maple and turquoise. I think it turned out great. Let me know your opinions in the comments section below. Don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.